Construction champions, it's your host Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning down the house just so we can rebuild it. And we're not talking about that project that went sideways six months ago that you're burning to the ground. We're talking about your business and how you can go be a construction champion so you never ever again have to think about burning down a house or a project that you are on but as always i am super excited for our guest today russ it is great to have you here thanks so much ron i'm really excited to, to do this with you i'm excited as well and before we jump into the meat and potatoes of it why don't you tell all the construction champions out there a little bit about yourself and what got you here to today Construction champions love it. Yes, so Russ Stevens, co-founder of the Association of Professional Builders, which is a coaching company for residential home builders across the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, even the UK. And uh, builders come to us because they typically they they want to generate more leads, they want to close more of those leads into sales, they want to increase their revenues, but most importantly, they want to increase their margins, and they want to do all that while delivering a better service to their clients. So we help them to achieve that through systemization. We have ready made systems which they can implement into their building company and they can work with our executive coaches one on one to help them reach their goals faster and easier than uh, otherwise might have been possible on their own. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love profit. I love what you're talking about. So we're going to dive right in there. And I'm going to ask the million dollar question. And that is, what makes a construction champion. A construction champion. Yeah, I know. I'm loving that term. We call them professional builders, but I think we're talking about exactly the same thing. And uh, obviously, there are residential builders, and then there are construction champions. Uh, and this really applies to the, the top 20% of the industry. These are the guys that are always looking to improve to do things better to deliver a better service and typically these are the guys that get better rewarded for what they're doing as well but to answer your question what actually defines a construction champion well i think it's systemization because you cannot deliver a world-class service on tiny margins and without systems. So you've got to put the systems in place. Um, and that typically is what we see separates the, the professional builders from the average builders in the industry. I love it. And, you, and you're right on point. Now, I'm excited to dive into this with you and talk about some systems and stuff, because I think it's really an overused terminology these days. You have a lot of people talking about systems that don't even barely know how to tie their shoes. Uh, somebody like you, you've been around, you've been around the industry for a while. You understand this stuff, hands down, backwards, look at it. What are some of these mistakes that you're seeing guys do today that I guess not necessarily mistake? What's some of the bad advice people are getting that we need to just put an end to? Yeah, well, um, I mean, to start with, before I get into the bad advice, I just want to maybe touch on the, that word systems, because uh, like you say, it can be a bit misunderstood. And I think maybe a lot of people think, well, I've uh, I've signed up to uh, to build a trend or build tools or co-construct or one of these platforms. So I've got a system. When we talk about systems, we are talking about far more than just uh, one piece of software. <clears throat> we are talking about processes, procedures for running your entire operation. They are going to cover marketing, sales, operations, financials, even uh, even your, your whole planning uh, as well. Everything is a process, you know, i.e. a system that uh, you've got to install into your building company and uh, I mean, installing is only step one, <laughs> actually <laughs> utilizing it <laughs> and following well, your own processes is, uh, is always uh, just as important. But um you know to uh you know to answer your question which was um like some of the like the, the bad advice i guess maybe you know, kind of seeing, what are you some... seeing out there that's not the right stuff but we the all... right stuff well yeah the the, the most here. common mistake yeah the most common mistake we see is builders chasing revenue before they chase profit 
And that really comes from a place of not understanding their real numbers in the first place, their real profit. So what's interesting is builders come to us because they want to generate more leads. If they generate more leads, they're going to have more sales, which means more revenue, which means more profit. And it doesn't work out that way, unfortunately, because majority of building companies, 95%, in fact, uh, according to the latest data we've collected, um, yeah, actually, it might be 92%. Yeah, it has improved. 92% <laughs> of builders are looking at inaccurate financial information because they and their accountants as well do not fully understand construction financials, which leads them to look at information that is not 100% correct. So because they're not looking at it, uh, correct information, they're making bad decisions. And those decisions include attempting to scale up their business when it's not currently profitable. Just because you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank doesn't mean you're actually making money. Uh, cash does not equal profit in this game, unfortunately, and uh, profit does not equal cash. So it's a really important thing to, to get right. And that is why all of our coaches always start with getting the financials fixed up before they attempt to scale up a building company because you know, you'll know you see a lot of uh, advertising from these generic gurus out there, very good marketers, you know, exceptional marketers, salespeople, great people to take advice from once you've got your model fixed up. But what we see all too often, and I'm sure you and your listeners have seen this as well, building companies that scale up fast, if they're not properly structured with the right margins, they topple over after a period of time, because although they generate positive cash flow and they can lose money for a few years, as the sales plateau, all of a sudden, all those debts catch up with them, a bit like a Ponzi scheme and they fall over. So that is one of the biggest issues we see in the residential industry right now. Yeah, no, I agree because if we, too often like just get caught up in chasing that top line revenue and people don't realize like you can be a 20 million dollar company and lose a couple million dollars easier than you can be a 20 million dollar company and make a couple million dollars like you have to have that foundation that you're talking about in place if you don't and you scale you can you just you ruin everything yeah, and let, let's be honest, sales is easy in this industry. It is really, really easy to sell a building contract. The difficult thing is doing it at a decent margin, you know, because anyone can <laughs> sign a contract at cost or below cost. You know, it's why we see so many average builders like plodding along. Yeah, you know, they don't make any money, but they kind of plod along. Yeah, you know, they with no sales skills or, or even any marketing. Yeah, you know, they rely on a, on a, a bit of referral work and, uh, and potluck, really. <laughs> but yeah, just, um, just like yeah. you said, the cash they just rely yeah. on having that cash and they think like everybody thinks everything's all good but eventually somebody comes knocking on that door it only takes one project to ruin yeah. everything there's a tipping point isn't there and then the whole house of cards collapses overnight almost and then we're left scratching our head thinking how did this building company rack up debts of two million like how did they lose all that money in the last year well they didn't they've been losing money for years it just was never reflected in their accounts that that's the construction industry is very specific and i i love i like how you, when you just broke that down about accountants not understanding how is the flow of everything? Because it's so true. And it's true in a, all aspects of a construction business is that there's really nuances. And it really does matter who you're getting your advice from. Yeah. And, and, and to highlight that as well, there's a term we use in this industry, work in progress. And that means something completely different to an accountant compared to uh, a let's say a construction industry expert accountant, like a general accountant versus a construction industry accountant, because work in progress is a term that actually came from manufacturing originally, and it was used to place a value on raw materials as they went through the manufacturing process, which means it's always an asset. 
But mm. in the construction industry, we use that calculation very differently because we front load jobs. <laughs> that calculation identifies how much we've uh, front loaded the job by, you know, i.e. we've claimed more from the client than we've actually paid out in suppliers. And it's not always over uh, front loading jobs either. It's simply the delay of supplier invoices coming in can cause this uh, disparity. And unless you understand what that number is every month, your financials will be wrong. And this is what um, non-construction specific accountants don't understand. And it's why they're so dangerous for builders as well, because we have so many examples of builders paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax on profits they never made because their accounts have been inflated. And that just compounds the problem because now they're, they think they're doing all right because they're growing, but they're getting tighter and tighter for money and they're, they're entering into payments plans with the tax office and they can't figure out why because they don't have any, you know, if I had all this money <laughs> that I'm paying tax on, you know, I should be having a much better life than I am. What's going wrong? And, and then you show them like you pull back the curtain and reveal the truth. A bit like the Matrix, really. Do you want the blue pill or the red pill? A lot of people don't want the pill at all. They're just like, <laughs> I'll stay in bliss, thank you very much. You know, don't, don't tell me my, <laughs> the true state of my construction company. But yeah, when the, uh, when the guys uh, take, the, uh, take the correct pill, that reveals the truth. And it's, uh, it's a groundbreaking moment because the lights come on and their business changes overnight because they now understand what has been happening and what needs to change. I believe that. And you know, how many times I ever, you, you hear it all the time, especially like right now in America here, we're in the mix of tax season. And I hear guys all the time say like the, the IRS thinks I make a lot more money than what I make. <laughs> so it's like, it's out there. Yeah. Yeah, look, if you are listening to this and uh, you've not hit the deadline for uh, for tax, yeah, do your work in progress calculation yourself. Don't leave it to your accountant. Do it yourself and see see that how how that changes your tax position. It's amazing how just one terminology that is used differently in construction can affect so much, and that's just one. Like literally one analogy or one way of wording something that can completely change the outcome for your yeah. entire business. I can give you another one, actually, that uh, I, I guess you could say it's bad advice. You could say it's a myth, but this is the way builders price their jobs as well. The traditional method is that a builder will estimate the cost. So they'll look at all the materials, the labor, they might factor in some, like I, I, I tend to think estimating is a cross between uh, art and science because we've got the science, haven't we? We've got the materials and, and the, the labor, which is the quotes, but then we've got the art. We can look at a site and we can see that's difficult access. So we know all of a sudden that's going to add to, well, yeah, there might be limited storage. So, you know, that's the kind of things only an experienced builder will pick up. Uh, so that's kind of the art form, but they do their, they do their estimate and then they add a percentage, you know, a markup uh, in order to make a profit. And that markup has to cover their fixed expenses. Now we don't do that. Uh, when we coach builders, we teach them a different methodology, which we call pricing for profit. And what that does is it looks at all the jobs that they're going to be running over the course of a year, how many they can run concurrently. Uh, and then when they price an individual job, we'll look at the timeline for that job and then what that job represents as a portion of their fixed expenses and we add that effectively to the cost of sales you know for estimating purposes as well now what we have is a true break-even point so the percentage that the builder now adds on is a net profit and bearing in mind their their salary should already be in the fixed expenses so it's pure net retained profit now when a builder does this they know the line they cannot cross you know if you've got a client that's trying to negotiate with you and they're trying to negotiate past your break-even point you're better off you know spending you know six months on the beach than uh, than building their home for them you know that's the reality but this transforms builders margins because now they're focused on protecting their net margin rather than looking at the dollar amount at the top and thinking yeah like that will do for cash flow. I can make that work. No, that that's so true with what what happens out there and how estimating goes. Like I remember back in the day, 
when I was going through and as we, we were scaling, figuring out what are our fixed margins and what does that look like on a monthly basis and a weekly basis? What, How does this need to be divided up? So you start to have an understanding of that because you can just say it's 40%. Well, 40% of what? Like every job of what you do in revenue, like you need to know what that number is so you can add it to that project. And like you said, you now start to have a baseline of I, if I go below this, like I'm losing money. Yeah, and, and I think a common mistake uh, that uh, we see a lot of builders making is they all, maybe they do uh, three, four hundred thousand dollar jobs and then they get um, like a, a a job come across their desk, which is a million dollar job and, and they get quite excited about it and they put their normal margin on, they see the dollar amount and they may be trimming it a bit because they know what the client's budget is or maybe the, the client even negotiates away their margin a bit. But what happens is they compromise their margin on the bigger jobs because they think well it's a bigger job there's more money i can make this work but it's actually the reverse these bigger jobs not only take longer but because they're more complex they they take more resources and decision making as well so you actually need to go the other way and increase your margin on those uh, on those larger jobs uh, and that you know it, it can take a year before you realize that man i didn't make any money on that job <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of, like it's like when we talk about chasing top line revenue, there can be some ego and stuff involved in that. And that's when you start yeah. getting around those million dollar. You want to be the guy like, OK, so if I take a break even or a loss on this million dollar project, we add it to the resume. But that loss on a million dollar project could be a substantial enough to just shut you down. Like you, we don't weigh the risk over the fact that I feel like I want to be the guy that does a million dollar project and you might not be the guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, would you rather sell a thousand Toyotas or one Lamborghini a month? I mean, it's, uh, it's prestigious to be the, the guy selling Lamborghinis, but, uh, the guy making the money is, uh, <laughs> is doing a lot more volume. <laughs> no. And I, I think that's where there's such a mindset shift that's got to start to happen. And I love I love having you on here talking about like it's not about top line revenue. And we put such an emphasis on top line revenue. But one of the things that has made the construction industry great for so long is guys have been able to just drive some profits. Like if you look back over time, like that's how the industry sustains. Some of the best business guys that have ever been have come from the construction industry because they understood. If I make a profit, it doesn't matter what my top line is. And if I continue to make a profit, my top line's just going to grow because it means I'm good at what I do at every aspect of the business. Yeah, we got a, a, a lot of guys come to us and and there seems to be an acceptance in the industry that uh, even after paying yourself a good wage, you know, 5% net profit, you know, is acceptable. And these guys, you know, I've seen a lot doing 20 to 30 million and they're making 5% net and they're saying, you know, I'm making a million dollars plus net on top of my wages. You know, I'm happy with that. But I say, look, we got guys doing 10 million that are earning more than that net. So why would you do twice the amount of work to get the same result? And, and moreover, like if you were going to do that amount of work, why wouldn't you earn double? You know, because 10% is 10% plus is where it's at net, not 5%. So why would you leave a million dollars on the table each year? It's you're just discounting your, your work unnecessarily. And doing a lot more of it. You yeah, think? that's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you if you want to grow, like grow profitably and maximize your margins, if you don't, you want to do less, then you can do a lot less than you're already doing for the, the same end result. Yeah. 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 You've got to value yourself. Why? Why do you think it is? So, I mean, I, I'm just as guilty of this as everybody else. But like, why is it that the revenue number is the thing we lead with? Or we ask, <laughs> like, that seems to be the first Anytime you're having interactions within the construction industry, whether it's remodelers, builders, contractors, they're going to be like, 
I build 300 homes and do 30 million a year in revenue, or I do, I do 15 remodders and do about 15 million in revenue. All the opposite is like, that's what somebody were asked. Well, what do you do a year in revenue? Like, why do you think that's such a leaning question in the construction industry? I think there's two sides to it. First of all, it sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm talking about the, the the revenue, but I think the real reason, uh, and this is this is based on data. We um, we survey the industry every year. 1,800 builders took part last year, so we got a lot of data and information on the industry, and uh, the data suggests the real reason is because the majority of builders simply do not know their margins. Yeah, there's still a significant amount of builders that don't understand the difference between markup and margin. You know, it's improving year on year, but yeah, we still got about half the industry not clear on that. Um, a lot of the industry isn't clear on what their gross markup is, their, the other gross margins, uh, and, and certainly not their net margins or their fixed expense ratio. So this is why they tend to talk in, in terms of revenue, I think, because when you dig deeper, then there's just not the confidence uh, around their their own numbers unfortunately which yeah which is it's terrifying because you know in this industry we're operating on high revenue and wafer thin margins you've got to know down to the last cent where you're at every single month i love it i think that is the best answer i have ever heard to that question like that that's really like that's what it is. Well, like you said, you have the data, you're surveying the people you're not just out here, just here to talk. Like you got, you get the information and have an understanding of who you're talking to and who you're helping yearly. So you, that's why you have the best answer to that question. Yeah. And I can tell you when we started coaching builders 10 years ago, now we started in Australia and man, those guys can be harsh, but uh, we do, we do events. We had guys like just walk out during events when we started talking about net profit margins being 10%. Um, because at that point, you know, it was almost theoretical. Like we knew what the ratios needed to be for a building company to be successful. But these battle hardened builders that had seen it all over the last 30 years, they were saying, that's impossible. This is, I'm not listening to this rubbish. They get up and walk out through a presentation and leave you standing there. But nowadays, uh, we've got so much proof. And like you say, we've got the, the annual survey, yeah, which backs up what we say. You know, plus, we've got literally hundreds of case studies as well, builders that have actually implemented these systems and achieved the 10% the net margin. So with so much proof, I think it's really hard for a builder to say this doesn't work. Some guys might think, well, maybe I can't do it, which you know, isn't true, because if you're a builder, you you can you can do anything, really, you're, you're already doing one of the most complex jobs there are. Mm -hmm. But I mean, <laughs> what we have heard, you know, especially um, heard it a bit in the US over the last year, builders that attended our presentations at uh, the International Builders Show in Vegas, they uh, they said, I, I was sitting there, I was, I was texting my wife, or they, they tell, I was texting my project manager, you know, whoever, or turning to the person beside me and saying, like, what did they say? They don't really expect us to earn that much, do they? And they, I mean, we even had people say to us, like, I didn't believe it, and I signed up to prove you wrong because I was going to get the money back guarantee. But <laughs> yeah, I was amazed that I did it and it worked. And so yeah, yeah, a, a proof really helps the belief. And I and what really helps, I think, is other builders now sharing the message as well. Because hey, I mean, obviously we're coaches, consultants. You know, you rightly so have got to be skeptical about what people tell you. You've got to look for proof to back it up. But when another builder says, like, yes, I did this and these are the results I got, that is, um, you know, it's just like breaking that record. You know, all of a sudden other people start breaking it in sports. You know, it breaks down that mental barrier. Awesome, man. I love it. I love what you're doing for all the champions out there. If they wanted to connect with you, follow you learn more about what you do where's the best places for them to do that yeah well if they wanted to learn more about what we do they can google the association of professional builders and uh, there's a plethora of information online that they can access for free but what i'd like to share with your listeners is our state of the residential construction industry report the latest version 2024 which was just launched last week i'd love to uh, to share a free pdf of that report with your uh, with your listeners so what we can do is uh, put a link in the show notes 
and uh, they can download it for free uh, if they don't have access to the to the show notes. Again, you know, just Google Association of Professional Builders. You'll find our website, and you can download it from the website. But uh, yeah, we'll try and make it easy for you guys by providing you with a link. Yeah, we'll drop that right in the show notes so everybody has access to it, plus all your other links as well. Russ, thank you for taking the time to be on the show. Oh, thanks for the invite, Ron. It's uh, been great hanging out with you. Yeah, I've loved it, and uh, it's a great show, man. It's gonna, the the construction industry is definitely it's ready for this one. Good stuff. So- Awesome. So construction champions, another episode in the bag where once again, we start talking about top line revenues and what is your actual profits? Are you hanging on by a thread? Are you one job away from completely wrecking everything that you've set out to build? We, we go out and build these companies and we have all this purpose and all these reasons behind it. But we don't protect the thing that keeps it afloat. And that's our bottom line. It's that profit. It's what keeps the business running so we can continue to grow. And I can't agree more with Russ. Like, if we don't understand that number, how are you ever going to continue to grow? You can just grow, grow, grow for no reason. Or you can grow and you can grow your profits as well as what you do annually and how cool would it be to be the guy because here's what i want here's what i want to start seeing champions showing up in leading with what they're making and not with what they're doing top line that's the construction industry that we're going to create we're all part of it we're going to be the ones showing up and saying no i'm, I'm making a couple million a year well what are you doing top line well here's the numbers Add it up and tell me what you think I'm doing top line. Like, like let's start to create that environment instead of an environment of who's got the biggest company that, you know, might be losing, you know, $100 million company and we're losing $10 million a year, but I'm bringing in private equity and we'll keep it rocking and rolling and all this stuff that might sound good. But at the end of the day, it doesn't put, it, it won't be what creates the legacy that, most people in the construction industry are chasing. They're chasing something bigger than just building a business. They want to build something that has an impact on their selves, their families, their community, and everybody around them. So construction champions, make sure you go check out that report. Check out all of our great sponsors that keep the show rocking and rolling. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Hey, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Nussbaum here, and I want to talk to you about how you can automate all of your marketing. We've had so many people on here talk about getting the systems in place. Well, we have partnered with Build 12 and Construction Champions podcast, Les O'Hara, the founder. What really excites me is his 30 years in the industry. And now he's built a system to be able to nurture your leads and continue to utilize that. I personally use the system myself. Build 12 is absolutely amazing. There's a lot of value in there. And it's a way to start getting away from Angie's list and all of that kind of stuff and start actually creating your own leads every day and have a system for them. So go on our website Check out the show notes. Go check out Build 12 and what it can do for the front end of your business today. It's absolutely amazing. I highly recommend going and meeting with Les and his son, Devin, and talking to him about what they built for their own business so the rest of the industry can take benefit from that. Here on Construction Champions, we're all about helping each other out in what is better than contractors helping contractors. I say nothing. So let's go take this to the next level. Go check out Build 12. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Les or his son, Devin. We're here to help. We want to continue to grow the industry.